Proverbs chapter 10, verse 11. Let's read together this one verse for tonight's message. Together, ready, read. The mouth of a righteous man is a well of life, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, once again, help us, Lord, to learn this lesson on controlling our words, controlling our tongue. Lord, such an important a tool of evangelism, an important tool for spreading the truth. But many times, O oh Lord God, if we are not careful, the tongue it not only is uh, something that can be a blessing, it can also be something that will be a stumbling block to many. I pray that tonight your word and your Holy Spirit will have a place in our hearts. And I pray you help me by your anointing uh, power and wisdom. I pray that you will cleanse us from all unrighteousness through your precious blood, the Lord Jesus. And Lord, there's anything that will block and obstruct the blessing from flowing to your people tonight, I pray that in Jesus' name, you will remove it, O oh Lord God, so we can freely enjoy what we need to learn tonight. Thank you for our brethren from Australia. Continue to bless Sister Ruth and Lord, uh, uh, her fiancé, as they get married this Friday. Thank you for our birthday celebrants today. Thank you for Danica, for Gaius, and also, Lord, for Mom Ruth. Continue, Lord, to give them many more years of service to you. And tonight... We bless uh, each and every one, even those that are tuned in online from different parts of the globe. We pray all this in Christ's precious name. Amen and amen. Thank you. You may be seated. If you study the tongue, even not uh, just a study in the Word of God, if you study the tongue, the tongue is a study that I believe uh, is a study of contrasts. If you talk about ironies, if you talk about paradoxes, I believe the tongue is, it, it, it can be an icon. Pwede ni mo na mahimong symbol of paradoxes and uh, ironies. To the physician, the tongue is merely a two-ounce slab of mucous membrane enclosing a complex array of muscles and nerves that enables us to chew, to taste, and swallow. How wonderful God has made us. Amen? But equally significant, it is the major organ of communication that enables us to articulate distinct sounds so we can understand each other. How essential it is. That is why kanang joke nato last Sunday without nga atong prayer, tarungo nato, okay? Og dili nato ang ang atong tang magamit og tarong instead of Lord heal our land, Lord hell our land. Morning ni initang, mo ng inyong mga naong pirting muguta kay giinitan mo. Lisud ka smile init no? Mm, lisud ka smile. But at any rate, we're so thankful to the Lord that we have hope. Without the tongue, there is no mother that could sing a lullaby to her child. No ambassador that could adequately represent a nation. No teacher that could stretch the minds of students and make them understand knowledge and the world that they live in. No lawyer could defend their client properly in court. No pastor could communicate the Word of God in a very articulate manner. No complicated, controversial issue could ever be discussed and resolved without the tongue. Although there are, I believe, uh, also uh, um, uh, 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 other ways and means of communication, like our deaf ministry, they have the sign language that their, their, their hands are their tongues. But even with that, even their expression as they express it in sign, sometimes, na ay mga sign language that can also be bad instead of good. So, seldom... Do we really think and pause and realize how valuable this, uh, this uh, strange muscle that is in the middle of our mouth really is? But the tongue, I believe, is not just vital, it is also volatile. It is not just vital, it is not only important in communication. Tonight, we're going to learn it is very volatile. Kibamon say volatile. 
dali dali ra mo mo silaob sa atong language dali ra mo react very volatile some volatile but whatever the case may be magbantay kita it can easily destroy it can easily hurt it can easily erupt it can easily do much damage look at james chapter 3 look at what the bible says in james chapter number 3 and verse number 6 the bible says and the tongue is a fire you see that a tongue is a fire the other day some bagdos caught on fire you see much damage even the aerial view of Barangay Sambagdos, grabe, tungod sa kainit, nasunog. Tungod sa kainit, many areas, many barangays right now are, are catching fire. And, and, and by the way, just, just to insert this, we need to really be aware, be careful that we do not uh, cause fire in our community or in our homes. But you know, the most dangerous fire that can erupt is the fire that comes from our tongue. The Bible says, a world, our tongue is a world in itself. A world within a world. As we say uh, over there in SRP, SRP, a city within a city. But the tongue is a world within a world. We have our own body, our own system, our, our body. But the tongue can cause a lot of damage. It is a world of iniquity, the Bible says. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body. And set it on fire, the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. If you do not watch your tongue, if you are unsaved tonight, if you do not watch your tongue, that tongue can bring you to hell. You are going to reject the Lord. Sometimes our pride uh, comes out and then we, we burst out words and we stand by our word and we know the truth. But because we are so proud, we reject the Lord Jesus Christ and we end up in hell. And I hope tonight, if you're here, you're not saved and uh, you're not born again, that tonight be saved. Be born again. Look at verse number 8. But the tongue can no man tame. This is what the Bible says. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. And I'd like to quote uh, what Washington Irving said, that a sharp tongue is the only edge tool that grows keener with constant use. You know, the more you use a tool, the dull it becomes. But the tongue, the more you use it, the keener, the sharper it becomes. It is a verbal cyanide, a lethal, relentless, flaming missile, which assaults with hellish power, blistering and destroying at will. And yet, it does not look like the brutal beast that it is, according to what the Bible says. Neatly hidden be beside or beneath our ivory palace gates, our teeth. The movements are an intriguing display of grace and coordination. Grabi gayo. Especially those that can just uh, uh, divert from one language to, th to the other. You know how languages are. English, you have uh, Spanish, Chinese, and Korean, and Japanese, and then uh, Tagalog, and Bisagdiri sa ato. We have a hundred dialects, even from one dialect to another. You can see the tongue gracefully just maneuvering and coordinating itself. It can curl itself either to a cherry whistle. <whistles> can you whistle? Kiba mo whistle? I don't know that, but they can, they can curl their tongue and then put this in their mouth and they can whistle a strong with, with, a, with strong force. Or they can manipulate a lazy afternoon yawn. With no difficulty, the tongue can flick a husk of popcorn from between two jaw teeth or hold a thermometer just the same. It can follow the directions of a trumpeter, allowing him to play a wonderful marching tune without a miscue. Grabe ang talent sa tang. But you have to watch out. 
once your, your, your hands get smashed by a hammer or your toe gets stepped on by someone or you hit your knee in a chair or a corner, suddenly your tongue, your tongue, amen, your tongue will burst out into a different tune. <laughs> All right? Not only is the tongue untamed, the Bible says in James chapter number 3, it is untamable. As long as we live, we will never gain control of the tongue. Bisag kami ng mga pastor, no matter how spiritual our position requires of us, no matter we lead in... A, in uh, kaning prayer vigils and, and we lead in spiritual example. Mga kaigsunan, usahay kaning among mga tang, mga pastor, kitang mga preacher, mga church leaders, deacons, usahay gawas gining. Mauna na. Ako na lang pugnan akong tang. Amen? Isn't that true? It will never gain control of itself. It defies being tamed. We can tame dogs, cats, bisag ka na mga dolphins, seals. You go to Ocean Park dito. I don't know kung nabatay seal diha. Mga parrot, different kinds of birds, eagles, minas, mukanta pa na, muhalo pa na, imo pa ng tulog. Guapu, 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 guapu. Kada suod ni mo, guwapo. As ng babae, ning suod, guwapo. <laughs> Tadluan ba? You can tame tigers, lions, even alligators. Some uh, alligator uh, tamers, they can put their head. I think Australia is famous for that. In the alligator farm. But the tongue, ako ginigihina, ako minsay, but the tongue is hard to tame. If this is the case, why then is Proverbs chapter 10, verse number 11 saying, the mouth of a righteous man is a well of life? Nga man, pastor, why? The Bible says in another verse, Psalm 39, verse number 1. Okay, Psalm 39, verse number 1. The Bible says, I said, I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. So this is, this is pretty much the reason why there is a righteous mouth, a righteous tongue. Because the Bible says, David said, I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. As we push forward in spreading the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, it is important that we are always aware not only of what we share from the Word of God, but what we say apart from the Word of God. Important na. Okay, sometimes we can be so eloquent in saying biblical and scriptural things quoting verse upon verse and scripture upon scripture. But after that, ang atong tongue does not equate with what we are saying. That's why David said here, I will take heed to my ways. So, it is because our tongue is connected to our thoughts, our subconscious, our conscious even as well. And it's important that we learn tonight very basic thing, how that we can be able to make our mouth, our tongue, a blessing. I want my tongue to be a well of life. You know, it, it's, it would be nice that when, whenever we would meet someone and we would part ways, that after we part ways, that person will say, I was blessed. I was encouraged. I was secured. I was strengthened. Dili nga kadakita ni mo, Pirmilang masakitan, malaslasan, madunggaban, matusukan. Di kaganahan mo duol anang klase nga tao. Kada duol ni mo agay, sakit. 
And there are times nga masakitan man ta. Sometimes messages like this or other messages from from previous uh, services have hit us, have hurt us, but in a good way to be able to strengthen us. But there are there are words that even though we get hurt, we never recover from them. Or it's hard for us to recover from. So I would like, we would like to have a tongue that is the source of life because our God is the God of life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Therefore, our tongues must be such. Number one, how do we have our tongue uh, in check? Number one, we must let the Holy Spirit of God control us daily. Not just our tongue, but us. Look at the, what David said. I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. You see, when the Holy Spirit of God is the one that controls us, apil na na atong tongue. This is the only way that our tongue can be controlled and be tamed if the Spirit of God controls us. You cannot control your tongue. I cannot control my tongue. We cannot control our tongue. But if the Holy Spirit controls us, controls our thoughts, then what comes out of our words, what comes out of our mouth, are words of life. That's why it is important to confess sin and we must acknowledge and call upon the Holy Spirit of God to take control in our life the, at the instant, at the moment that we wake up. Galatians 2.20 the Apostle Paul says, and we, we, we love this verse, we, we sing this verse, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, not I, but Christ liveth in me. This is a daily thing. My question is to us tonight, what do we live for every day? Because that will affect what comes out of our mouth. It doesn't matter if you're in business, it doesn't matter if you're at work, doesn't matter if you're in school. Doesn't matter if we are here in church. It must be the Spirit of God that controls us. Surrender our day to the Lord. Surrender our situation to the Lord. Surrender our life to the Lord. In fact, if we live in total surrender and total commitment to the Lord, many of our fears and worries disappear. Our pressure goes down. Tension goes down. Because we entrust everything. Brother Rene, entrust everything to the Lord. I know what it means to take the board exam. Grabe ang pressure, ana. You know, kaning board exam, kibaw ka kung sa'yo pinakadakong pressure, ana, dili man ang exam. Kanang mahagbong ka. Mahadlo ka. You, you're afraid to fail. Because what will people say? You're afraid of what people will say. If you have a small grade, if you fail... It's not really taking the exam. I mean, at least from what I... Sakay isulti ni Guano mo, hagbong ko ani. Sakay batiyon sa akong ginikanan. Nagbayad na ba gini sila? Nadanghang kita gunahona, ana ba? Wala ka magunahona sa exam? If you take the exam, just think about the exam. But more so, think about the Lord. In the moment that when I took the board exam years ago, in the 1990s, I said, Lord... I have studied, everything is in my mind, but I will not allow worry, I will not allow fear to take over. I just surrender everything to you. Please help me recall these things. I know there were questions there that I could not understand. There were questions that at first glance, you know, it was, and then, but, but I just skipped that, tried to answer everything, then went back to those I didn't answer, and I asked God for wisdom, and slowly those questions became understandable. So much so, I was so relaxed that I finished the exam and then I said, Human ako. Then I was one of the first five that finished. Dili ko top five, ah. First five that finished the exam. That finished the exam. Dili ko top five. Finish the exam. Nilaka ako. Kalma kayo. And I only can attribute that to one thing. Gino oro gito. Kuya uwan ko eh. Krabi ka kuya na ko ato. It was in the University of the East because we still didn't have um, local board exams during that time. Karon, blessed na kaya ang mga ang mga kon kon na aragidiri. So now we had to go to Manila, review there, and spend there, and all these things. Man, that was that was something else. But at any rate, 
trust everything to the Lord. We must let the Holy Spirit of God control our day. Maybe tomorrow, uh, start of work again, start of school again. Ay, bakasyon, lamik yung bakasyon, no? Ganahan ta mag walay klase, walay trabaho, pero tomorrow, balik na saad. Ano saad ang mga pressure, mga utang, mga order, mga meeting, mga tanan, exam for the students, atong graduating students, mag-comprehensive pa ni sila. Mm, amen. Katong, katong ni Amen, pasar na to. Excited man. Mm, katong wa mo ko na, looy kay mo. But we can be pressured. But if we surrender our day to the Lord, Lord, ikaw nang bahala. Job chapter 6, verse number 24. Teach me, and I will hold my tongue and cause me to understand wherein I have erred. Psalm 35, verse 28. And my tongue shall speak of thy righteousness and of thy praise all the day long. Nindot ni. In the midst of pressure, in the midst of a hot day, yesterday, we were, uh, we were having an outing with the Bible College students, so we went there to Guanzon Beach and what's it doing? Atong blue pool. Blue pool. Anyway, we went there, nag, nag outing me dito. We just wanted to, uh, to encourage our, our uh, Bible College students for their hard work, and you know, we were there. And so after lunch, my wife and I and um, Brother Dave, we went back. 12.15, we left Guanzon Beach. 12.15, naga ha, naga. Mga kaigsonan, wala pa mi kaabot sa plaza sa Minglanilya. Duha ka oras na mi. Sa Dan, Brad. Two hours. We left early because, ah, everybody is having lunch, so the street is clear. <laughs> From Naga, to wala pa mi makita layo pa ang gaysano ha huh? 2 hours na mi 1 uh, sorry 2 hapit na 2 hours 2 to something 2 o'clock man siguro okay 115 to we were just on standstill and it was hot nag 38 na good nagtan-aw ko temperature sa auto ba so outside temperature. I looked at my dash and I said, oh, 38. Lami na kay igawas bitaw nga pangitao ni mong solusyon bitaw. Kana bitaw ng mangita nga nganong na traffic mani. I want to solve this problem. What is wrong here? Maybe someone is talking, someone is wasting their time. Pero mga kaigsunan, init mang kaayo. Init kaayo. So, my mind was just, ang akong baba mga kaigsunan, Kasultihon na kayo, pero ang Holy Spirit, ayaw, ayaw, good. Init pa, na traffic pa ka, musturya ka pa, wa na, wa yun kayo makuha na. Ako pa ni mo. Just praise the Lord. So anyway, we would move about one car for every 15 minutes. One car. What's a 15 minutes? One car. Nakita na doon na kayo ang gaysano sa Minglanilya. Ingon is Brother Dave, Tang ganina ram taon taan ni pastor ni ko Brad. Ganina didto ta Brad karon diri na duol na kay dako na kay listra sa litra kay sa ano Brad. Duol na lang kay ta Brad. <laughs> Magsigin lang tag pangitag nindot. And you know what? My stress kay di ko ganahan kanang mga ana o kanang mas ang stress na ko makisun na nagsigig ka ubos. After another 15 minutes na, nagyod kita na namong plaza sa Minglanilya, ana, kita na, ah, 2.15 na, okay na, labaw lang gamay, 2.15. Pag tanahan ni mo sa unahan, nag-ana pa, munaog man na, niya padong dito sa, sa, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> lawaan. Bumper to bumper. Bumper to bumper. Ang buot nga no, wag ko kasabot, I didn't understand what was, what was wrong. But anyway, we got to the we got to SRP right around close to three o'clock already. Limangana from from Naga to SRP almost three hours. Praying ko ah karong adlawa makaabot ng yudani. 
Karong pizza ha? Ano lang kung panghuna-huna God? So you keep saying things that it will strengthen you. It will, and I said, thank God, wa kung magsigrik la. I could have just, you know, cursed the day. I got to say, kung sa may kuwana ni, I could have just said bad things to uh, the Minglanilia, Mitcom, Ma- Minglanilia traffic, whatever, or Cebu, or whatever. Pero wala may, it will not move. The traffic will not move. Hello? Di ba? Enjoy lang yun da. Commit your day to the Lord. Ko, Lord, ikaw na bahala ni Lord. If this is your will that we will be in traffic for three hours, so be it. Ay lang ni pabutha among auto, Lord. Mm. Yeah, nag-una, pag, by the way, nag-una mga three cars away, napagi oil tanker ni kukan ni. Buto ganin ni pagan ginitanan. <laughs> Protecta ay lang may ginoo. We must surrender our control, the control to the Holy Spirit of God. Amen? The danger is when we do not allow the Spirit of God to control us and we will allow the flesh to control us. Look at Psalm 36. Look at what happens. Verse number 1, The transgression of the wicked saith within my heart that there is no fear of God before his eyes. For he flattereth himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be hateful. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. Here's because... Here's what happens when we leave off God in our life. We leave off to be wise, the Bible says. He hath left off to be wise and hath left off to do good. The moment we do not let God be a part of our daily life, you are going to leave that which is good. You are going to leave saying what is right. Now listen. What we say is directly proportional to who or what controls us. Kung ka nang naasin mo baba, puro lang na kwarta, that is who controls you, or what controls you. Kung ka nang naasin mo baba, puro ginoo, puro ang kaayo sa ginoo, ang ginoo, na problem, pero ang ginoo, God is still there. Then that is who controls you. So number one, we must let the Holy Spirit of God control us daily. Secondly, we must constantly feed our minds with right and godly things. What's in your mind comes out of your mouth. Romans 12, 2, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Philippians 4, 8, Finally, brethren, what sort of things are true? What sort of things are honest? What sort of things are just? What sort of things are pure? Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Yes, pastor, na may mga neg- yes, there are negative things, yes. Of course, we recognize that. We do not deny that. There are bad things, yes. But we do not give it much importance as the good things, as the things that are worthy of praise. Things that are worthy of, that are virtuous, lovely, good report. We're quick to report the bad. Marites, tolits, dalira kaita, maka report. To, to make it sound spiritual, we say, I pray na to. Spiritual kaya, I pray na to. Ano, ang sa minita po? At si kon ba si brother so and so si sister so and so? I pray na to kay si kibaw ka. Wala hawa na. Kato moro to. Moro tong kato first line that I pray na to. Si kon si wala. Kibaw na ni hawa na. I pray moro to. I pray <laughs> moro tong spiritual. Lastly number three. Okay, balik ko na to. We must let the Holy Spirit control us daily. Number two. We must constantly feed our minds with things that are right and godly. And lastly, we must practice a good habit of self-discipline. Kanegyod, on sa my fruit of the Spirit, what is the last fruit of the Spirit according to Galatians, Ephesians chapter 5? Or Galatians chapter 5? Self-control. Diba? Temperance. 
practice kita. Sometimes ka na bang maglagot na ta niya or kanang kanang uh, gossip daghan ka ayog mga dapat i-control Lord dili ko Lord Ikasaway daghan ka ayo Ephesians 4:29 Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of what encouraging strengthening edifying amen we are a church a church is a place of edification hello amen said moy tomori tomori this is a place of edification ayo mo anang mag spread o gossip ayo ta ana makaguba gina sa simbahan gyud makaguba gyud sa simbahan gyud Unsa may maguba pastor ang unity sa church. And once we are not united, we are easy picking sa, sa kaaway by the devil. Dali na lang ta. Kanang ligon kanang strong uh, bandol, di na dali nimo mabali. But once we give in to the devil, makuha na na, ma, maluag na na, dali na lang kay ta bali-bali on. Kinahalan, magbanday ta. So what is the discipline? Here's the discipline and we will, we will close with this. Number one, think before you speak. If possible ba, discipline. If you are just a person that just says something without even thinking, you need to discipline yourself. Because that is what will always get you into trouble. You can never be a blessing. Sao ni mo pag-blessing? Maay kita mo say sa, sa uh, share, mag-soul winning, pero atong ba-ba, kahuman sa soul winning, muratag sobra pas unbeliever. Paulaw, taan na, oy. Wato ka mamalikas, pero ay mong ba-ba. Pating, wagi, di na ma-strengthen na na. Before our lips start moving, pause first, pause. Think about what you're going to say. Mo nang advantage sa mga usahay kaning mga phlegmatic, kaning mga melancholic, kay magunahuna gyud. Usahay kaning mga kuan kayo kanang dritso lang murag si Pedro ba. Lord ako Lord, basta ako, di kumbiya nimo kanang sa lang. Wa nay mga klaro, ako di kumbiya nimo. <laughs> Asa ka? Peter syndrome ba? So, think about it. Are, is it accurate? Is it exaggerated? Is it kind? Is it cutting? Is it necessary? Isulti pag yun mo, ayaw na lang. Wholesome, vile, grateful, or complaining. Romans 7.25 I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. It's important to think first, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Number one, think first. Say it. Say it. Number two, talk less. Talk only when needed. I know there are some that are really you have to be mubuto ka kung di ka masturya. There are some people that they just, that's their personality. They need to talk. Whenever the room is silent, mura nagmubuto sila. Pero kung ingana ka, if that is your personality, think first. As much as possible, talk less. Talk less. Proverbs 21, 23. I think this is where the Chinese proverb got his idea. 21, 23. Read it. Go. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. You know what the Chinese proverb is? On saman. Daghang sulti, daghang sayop. Gamay sulti, gamay sayop. 
Was salty. Basig bad breath. Basig bahog ba ba? Was salty. Minus ang sayop na to. Diba? For our Australian brethren, that's Proverbs chapter 21, verse 23. In Visayan. Uh, in Chinese, sorry, in Chinese. Talk less. Talk only when it is needful. If you do not know the topic, ayog sige comment. Muro ka haud ka ka, kabalog ka, wakay ka kibaw, naka-research ka na. Adi nga niyon, magunis siya. Uh-huh. Yung ikustorya niyo, engineer. Engineer rin ka. <laughs> Doktor rin ka. Mara ni mong tumaron, ano yung kasturya ni mo, doktor? Or nurse, or medical person? Talk less. O niya, para dili, ma- ma-apply na to ang mensahe, muundang na ko, talk less man. Start now. Number three. <laughs> so I will start now. I will end this message. Amen? <laughs> start now. Tonight, Ask the Lord, Lord, control me. Holy Spirit of God, control me. Amen? We need that. I believe we can be more effective. Keep on having that fervor, fervor, that zeal in sharing the gospel. But together with sharing the gospel is guarding our mouth. Okay? Sometimes we'd like to open a conversation. Di ba yung magsolwining ta na antay mga questions, mga koan, mosturya gita so that we can connect with the persons. And sometimes, sa'yo pa nga itong pag-connect. Kumusta man ka rin manang? Nanambok. Huwag pa kakailan niya. Nanambok lagi ko rin manang. Ano sa may? Huwag pa kakashare o gospel. Tanaw sa niyo. Close, ta? <laughs> Comment-comment, magan ako. Pero, okay rin manang manang. Kay. Healthy manang manang. Pero wala na, naigo na. Niya, actually manang ni ako kay gusto ko mo mo share sa gospel basic ko awa ah, na kay mong baba naguna di ba amen so bantayan na to na bantayan na to na so i hope and pray that we will be more effective soul winners as we guard our tongue amen and allow the spirit of god to control us maybe in your home your parents are really antagonistic about the gospel because mayo kita musultik scripture pero wa na gani scripture wa na balik ta sa atong kinaiya tubag-tubag ta sa atong ginikanan kinalambantay na to atong baba you want your parents to be saved you want your brothers and sisters to be saved guard your tongue every head bowed every eye closed father we thank you for this blessed time that we can be able lord to be reminded of this basic truth but yet so many times we forget. So many times we, we do not pay attention to the damage our tongues have done. Forgive us, Father, for many times we have uh, damaged the, uh, the hearts of people. We have not only drawn them away from you, but we have drawn them away from us. And Lord, I pray that you will help us, Lord, to be controlled by the Spirit each and every day of our lives. Help us to be, the ble- to be a blessing in what we say and most of all, also what we do, for it is connected to each other. Tonight, I pray that as we come to the altar, may the Spirit of God take hold and control of our church. That, Lord, our church we will be a blessing in what we say. And, Lord, that you will correct those things that um, um, are going on probably that are damaging the relationships of people because of the tongue. I pray all this in Jesus' name. While the piano plays softly, stand from your seat. Come to the altar and ask God to help you control your tongue. Surrender your life to the Spirit and let the Spirit of God to control your life. Whatever you think, whatever you say, that you will determine to be an encouragement. Amen. That you will determine to be a blessing.